Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. This is me. I am back. I am Rukai Muhammad Sali. So you are all welcome back to Black Rose TV. And I am so excited for this video today. You can get it like you can get what I'm trying to say. You can feel the excitation from my voice and how fast I'm really talking because I talk really fast when I'm excited. So I know it has been long. I, will, I am on camera. I shot a video on camera, I think, since Ramadan so and it has not been easy for me to shoot yes that is one of the reasons so i just want to shoot this video on camera because it deals with everything you see here okay reasons why i don't shoot mostly on camera it was because i do not have like a fixed place that i shoot not really a fixed like i don't have a setting a place that i set everything i just come and shoot i would call it a studio maybe a home studio uh, I've been moving, you know, when you move from school to home and it, like and in school, I stay in the hostel. It's really hard for one to get a place to shoot that is conducive, that's comfortable, that's okay for me to shoot. So that's why I've been really off camera most of my videos. It's usually a voiceover. Please ignore my background, ignore any other thing that you can hear. Just listen to the voice because I'm going to be talking about a very important topic and I'm so excited to do this. All right, I am going to talk about my journey, my makeup story, everything about it, because I've been getting quite a lot of questions from people around me, from social media, about my identity, how I started it, how it's going. So I am here to do that video. Yay! I'm not just going to answer your questions, but I'm going to tell you more about it and to clear some perceptions, some doubts, and some views that we have based on the Nikabi sisters. Question one, let's start with it. When did I start wearing niqab? <laughs> well, I started wearing niqab at a very young age. I think my early teens, 14, 15, something like that. 14, 15-ish, yeah, something like that. I started wearing niqab when I was around 14, to 15 years i can't pinpoint the real age but it's around that area around that age so i started wearing it because i was um, my school that i went to the islamia islamia is an islamic school that we go to in the north this is how we say this is how we call it islamia in the north we call it islamia and islamic school not and some people call it madrasa over here so it was from my Islamia that I started. We had this new girl in our class. And the setting of the Islamia is that boys and girls do not, like we don't stay in the same class. We study in a different class. We study in different classes, boys and girls. We study in different classes. So I didn't really, and I didn't even know what it was that I have seen people wearing it, but like I've never been so close to one wearing it like that girl, like to be close in person, like to sit, to talk and everything. So when she first came and she's older than us, she was wearing it. I saw how people respected her. Everyone was like, not just the students, but also the teachers, they respected this girl because she is really like, you, you're going to just like her. She knows how to conduct herself, you know, those kind of things. And so, that was when I started developing the interest to know what it is. I was curious. So we got promoted to their class, I think a year later, and our teacher went on sick leave. We didn't have a teacher then, and we were asked, like we were matched with the boys of, of our same class level. They had a male teacher. So when we got promoted to that new girls class, I noticed that some of the girls in the class they started wearing it, like they have started wearing it in the class. So I thought maybe I didn't feel anything like the need to wear it then until we were asked to study together with the boys of our class. So most of the girls, like almost everybody, they collectively agreed to wear it. And I didn't really, I wasn't much of a fan. So I just wore it because I didn't want to stand out. Because I don't want to stand out. And I just don't want to be the only one, even though like we were younger then, but I just don't want to stand out. I started wearing it out of habit, influence, and curiosity. That was it. 
And then, which leads us, I've already cons um, answered question two. So I'll just keep to it. Uh, okay, yeah, question two, where I started wearing it. I've already answered it in the pre previous question. Out of curiosity, habit and influence. Out of curious, out of habit and influence because they were all going to wear it, I don't want to stand out. And out of um, curiosity, just for me to feel what it feels like to be in a bag, what it feels like to wear it, and like how um, how are people going to relate with me? Are they going to relate with me like they do with that girl, or am I going to be different? So I just wore it. Question three, was it easy to wear? To answer that question frankly, no, it was not easy to wear. Because when you wear this, it's like you're blocking, your, you're covering your face. I don't want to use the term blocking. It's like you're covering your face. It's only your eyes that is visible. So it's not really easy to wear. Back then when I even started wearing I don't even know how to wear it. You know, like there's one that's like this simple, the single makeup. And then there's the one that has like a back cover. And then there's the half niqab. So at that time, it was the one, the full niqab with the back cover and all. That was the one I was wearing. It was not, it was really hard. We all now can relate because of face masks that, that people wear these days, like face masks. How do you feel when you wear a face mask? Is it hard? Is it easy? Do you breathe normally? Well, I breathe like normally. I breathe easier with a niqab than with a face mask on. So it's not easy to wear. Question three, how is my journey so far? My journey so far has been really a rough one. I have had a really, really rough journey. It was rough for me because right from the start, I lost focus, I lost the essence, I lost the aim for me to start wearing it. I only wore it out of habit, influence and curiosity then because but I, I didn't have a deeper connection with it. Because when you just do everything, when you do anything because everybody is doing it, you don't even know why you're doing it. So at the first, it was really hard for me. I even took it off. But then I realized that if you're going to wear this, you have to represent it. You have to use it the way it should be used. You have to make sure that you have like served every right. You have every right for you to wear it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it was, yeah, I started wearing it then. The first year, it was... Easy. It wasn't easy. It was just I was just going along with the floor like everybody else was doing. But then I realized like if I'm going to wear it, I should wear it simply because I want to wear it. I want to get closer to Allah. I want to have a deeper connection in my life. Like I want to have, I want to have something more than just wearing. I want to feel something. That was why. So I took it off then. When I took it off. I felt bad because it's like I was misusing it. It's like I was doing, like I was not doing justice to it. And I'm not representing every Nikabi sister that wore it wholeheartedly then. So I just took it off. After a year of realizing what I did and everything, I wanted to perfect. I wanted to clear up my mistakes because I felt really bad. So I took it on again, but it was partially. I only wear it to go to public places. I think I was around 16 I took it on again. I think I was around 16, 16, yeah, 16, 16, 17, 16, 17, something like that. I wore it again and it was partially. I only wore it to go to madrasa, to go to maybe the hospital, maybe marketplaces, places like this, public places. But I couldn't wear it to go to banks because it's their policy. You don't wear a niqab, you don't enter a bank with a niqab. And I was like, that's absurd. Why would you not allow me to enter this, into the bank with it? So we started facing security challenges. People were using it to create chaos in the society. And I felt really uncomfortable because people would be looking at me. People will make me feel uncomfortable when I'm out, especially when I'm out in the marketplace because we've had incidents in Kano, in the marketplace with people wearing it and doing a lot of stuff that was not really cool. So I, people around me were not really comfortable with me wearing it when I go out in public. So I just took it off, but I felt I started having the connection with it. Unlike the first time, the second time that I wore it, I had a, a deeper connection with it. I started, you know, when you start to get the hang of thin, 
you are starting to vibe with it. So that was how it was for me on my second journey. And then I, after, I think a year or so as well, I started wearing it gradually. But then when I took it off the second time, I made a promise to myself that if I am going to wear it again in the future, I'm going to do it wholeheartedly. No matter what, I will try to overcome the challenges that it has to come with. I will do everything that I can to see that I do justice to it. I know you cannot please everybody, but I'm trying to do justice on my part. So whenever a finger has been pointed at me, I know it's not from me. It's from the other person. So I took it on again. I put it on. And when I put it on, then I went to school. Yes, that was when I went to school. I started um, university. Well, I would say it has been a really good journey because I'm so grateful for putting it on again. I have not taken it off ever since then. And one, like, one surprising thing with this niqab is when we wear it, when I wore it for the second time, there was a time we went to a function to, uh, I think it's, uh, it's an event with my mom. It's an old ladies event, but yeah, I wore it to the event. So when I sat, this lady sat next to me, she's an elderly lady. She was relating to me like an, like an adult in her early 20s, you know, that kind of thing. She was really talking to me about life, like counseling me and all. I felt really good like sitting getting that those words from that lady because the event was about like the muslim journey and all it's a tafsir in ramadan and it was like a lecture they were giving so she was telling me about things about life and all after the event my mom introduced me to her because she knows my mom and i, did, I didn't know that she was the lady that my mom knew my mom introduced me to her as her daughter the woman was surprised she's like oh my god i didn't realize that because and after the event i took it off She's like, I didn't realize you, you were this young to be able to do it. Like, she gave me a pat on the back for me to be able to wear it at that age, and she encouraged me. So that was when I began to find the connection with the niqab, and I felt like it's a good thing that I'm doing. So when I took it off the second time, I felt really bad because it was due to security reasons. Because for the first time in my life, I felt a deeper connection with it and I felt the need to be a better person, like sincerely from my heart, not for anyone, but for myself. I felt that deeper connection with myself that I should be a, a better person. I should be. And I felt a deeper connection with some things that I overlooked. I wasn't practicing much in my day. So I felt really bad taking it off the second time. So when I made that promise to myself that I would do right, I would do right by the name of the niqab, by the, you know, the image, I saw some ground rules for myself, some principles which I do follow and some, you know, it has undergone the amendments. <laughs> okay, not to be so serious. What I did was I searched some principles for myself when I took it on, I said, okay, if people can respect me this much, if people can make me feel so good, if I can feel the need to be a better, a better person than I am today. So with or without it, I can still be that person. I can still do what I want to do. So I started following these principles, you know, you know how it felt, the whole transformation stuff. I started transforming myself to be a better person every day. And then for the third time that I put it on, going back, I don't know why I'm going back and forth in this story. I just hope you get what I'm trying to say because I want to, I want you guys to have my own perception. When I wore it for the first time, I was naive and young. I'm not trying to give you guys reasons or give an excuse for me doing what I did then. Because No, I'm doing this, I'm telling you all this because I want, if there's any other person who is going to wear it out of habit, influence or curiosity or because everybody is doing it, please, I'm not telling you not to, but you should find a deeper reason to, you should find a solid reason for you to wear it so that you do justice to it. That is all I'm saying. And if you have done that, I want you to learn from my mistake and luckily avoid it. So when I wore it for the third time at school, that was how it started my good journey started to kick off and I wouldn't call myself an on and off anymore but I have like the 
variety makeup styles i like i have the full makeup one i wear with the full hijab and then i have this which is easier for me to wear with a tarha it's easier to like it's just easier for me to wear with a tarha if i wear the other full makeup it's somehow it's it's really hot to be honest it's hot and we're in sudan guys it really gets hot here whenever you go out so i'm trying to find something that is easier for me to work with and then i have my own personal like uh what i what i call the less makeup day which i never go out with my face out i usually wear a face mask i'll share the pictures with you guys so now what we have is not an on and off niqabi but a niqabi in transition you understand what i'm saying like there are days that i feel i want to wear the full niqab whenever i wear the hijab I wear the full niqab on and there are days I just wear the simple niqab which is my favorite and then there are days that I wear the half niqab or there are days when I feel a little, when the fashion in me wants to kick in, I wear, you know there are incidents that you just want to have that elegance, you just want to be glam and all, you can be a niqabi and you can be a fashionista as well, it all depends on how you do it and then what I will say is, I'm not an on and off niqabi anymore, I'm a full-time niqabi, but sometimes you can find me wearing the face mask, which for me is almost equivalent to the niqab. So to those people that point their fingers at niqabis, hello, how do you see us now? We're all the same, okay? <laughs> so moving on to the next question, I think it's question four, five. Moving on to the next question. Have I faced any problem with my family wearing it? No. This is one thing that Alhamdulillah I can say I am proud of. My family has been understanding and really supportive of me. My mom like recently bought me a whole set of niqab, not just me, but I and my sister. Because I'm not the only niqab at home, my sister, my immediate, like she's a full-time niqab. She's even a niqab. She, she has the whole right to call herself a full-time niqab that I have. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, she's really good. So I, she is, I'm older than her, but I really look up to her. You know, that kind of thing. She is an inspiration to me and I really love her. I love her zeal with the niqab and all. I love her vibe, how she does it. She's really good. I really, sometimes when I feel like I am down, when I look at her, she inspires me to be a better person. So Alhamdulillah, my family has been supportive, although... My friends, some of my friends and relatives were not really cool with me wearing it because I started wearing it at a young age, even though I didn't know what I was doing then. But I've lost people that I thought were friends along the way, and I've gained people who, alhamdulillah and mashallah, that I've gained and I'm proud to call my friends. Some even have turned into sisters. So all I can say is alhamdulillah, my family were supportive and understanding. Only a few relatives and friends that were not so that were not so okay and guess what it doesn't matter the next question on what level what level am i now concerning the niqab am i a full-time niqabi or an on and off i've answered the question in the previous uh i've answered this question previously so i am a full-time niqabi in transition this is what i gotta say based on this and then ever fell a victim of hate crime or or verbal abuse because of wearing the neck up okay directly no indirectly yes people try to throw shade at me for wearing it i can say like people back there when where i am from i'm from the north so people have not really people wear it but not everybody understands it there are people that, oh God, sorry, I'm just turning the camera anyhow, my hand is tired of holding the camera. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Okay, uh, but back, now, back there at home, people wear it, but there are some people who still do not understand the niqab conception at all. I have had friends, as I've stated earlier, I've had friends that pointed a finger at me for wearing it. Some have said really not so good things to me. Some have said, so have said really bad things that I still don't want to remember, even though it's all forgotten. But sometimes when you remember some things, you feel bad, especially when it comes from a person that you thought was a friend. Somebody, what I want to share, like, that came from somebody that I felt 
would even defend me when people try to throw shade on me was the person looked me right straight to my face and said, how do you think you're going to find a husband wearing that? Do you think you're going to get married at all? You should just take it off because you're more beautiful with it, without it. I'm like, okay. I did not take it to be an insult then. But then when, you know, when something is said to you, I'm a person that is somehow a little bit slow to process information. When I went home and I sat, it came back to me. I was like, oh my God. I can't believe this person said this to me. It's one thing that I can say, like I've faced from other people that has really hurt me. Even though I have overlooked it and I don't even take it to heart, but it's, it's really painful to hear hearing it from that person. So I think that is the only thing that I can say I have faced. Yes, from other people is like the stereotypes that people have that the Gabis are not educated, they're not civilized, they, they can't speak English. Hello, what is she speaking right now? So when I, there's this one time that I went to a store and I wanted to purchase something and ask them about their services. So the cashier, the lady at the cashier, she was like, okay, she didn't know what to speak to me. She's contemplating whether to speak Hausa to me. And from my understanding, it's she cannot speak my native language very well. So she started like talking to me in Hausa, in English and mixing it with Hausa so I understand very well. I told her, no, I'm fine, it's fine, you can speak English, I understand. She was surprised. So this is the only thing that I can say I get from my people. And the only like huge thing is the not so civilized version, the stereotypes that people throw at us. This is the only thing. I'm speaking this based on, like on behalf of every Nikabi because I have had chats conversations with lots of Nikabi sisters, and especially from the North where I come from. And this is their main, problem that we face with the general public. We are not civilized. We can't do anything. I have a friend. She is, oh my God, she is a techie. She's a tech genius. But when she, whenever she goes to where she does her, her stuff, people are really surprised to see her doing it. There's a person that told her straight to her face, technology isn't for people like you. What can you bring to the table? And that has helped her, boosted her confidence a lot of, in a lot of ways. So, I think I've not been a victim of ver of physical hate crime only verbal. And alhamdulillah, we are still moving. One thing that like people have the perception they have about Nikavis is we are not, we don't know how to have fun. We cannot have fun. We don't. Everybody has their own definition of fun. If having fun means going to the club, going to parties, you know, those kind of things, those kind of crazy things is what you guys call fun no we do know how to have fun within our limits we know when to have fun how to have it maybe you can even have fun more than you guys we have a lot of amazing ideas this i don't want to talk much about it because i said i'll be talking about it in the part two of this video and you are going to see ways that they can be have fun in the part two i really am looking forward to a collaboration with any Nikabi. why am i shooting this video in the first place is for me to share my experience and to help you clear out any doubt. But I have a request for you guys. Normally, I'm the one who wants you guys to request in the comment section what you think about a video or if you want, or if, or if you have something you want me to talk about. But this time, it will be the other way around. I am requesting a collaboration with any YouTuber, not every day YouTuber. If you're just a viewer and want to collaborate with me, want to be on the, want to be in my videos, I am so open to you. What perception of Nikab, what perception do you have about Nikab is before you saw this video? And not just perception like your experience, have you had any experience with any Nikabi? How was it? I want to know from you guys, I want to know everything because I have had some conversations with people that are non Nikabis, even some brothers, and when I hear about their perception, I will drop it in the next video, which is a part two of this video, inshallah. But I'm not sure it will be really early. It's going to be really late because I'm still, we are still in school and it's really hard for me to find time and shoot. So I'll try my best to see that I shoot that video. But yes. So I want to have a collaboration with anyone, whoever is interested to be in this video to talk about the niqab. My door is open. I have been inspired by 
Tineka Bidaris. She is the source of inspiration for this video. I have seen her. she interviews people, mostly Nakabi sisters, about their experience, how it's going, how they started and all. So I got inspired by her. Please, I'll drop her link down in the description box. Do check her channel, subscribe to her as well, show some love, you guys. So my last words on this video is do not judge a book by its cover. I started getting the real meaning of this saying when I started wearing the niqab. So my next, the part two of this video is going to be more about the challenges I have faced and other people have faced and what perception do other people have about niqabis. So like this video, comment, please, I need to hear your views in the comment section, fill it up. And if you have not subscribed yet, well, I don't know what you're doing. Please subscribe, okay? Smash that subscribe button. It's somewhere down here, I think, by this side or here. I don't. It's just down. You will see. It. It's a red, red button. Click on that, and then there will be a bell next to it. Click on that bell so you get notified when a new video is being uploaded. All I can say here is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Meet you in my next video.